Hello everyone. So today we have a slow drain. So first we're going to check to see if the stopper is uh, functioning correctly. If it's closing and opening because sometimes these stoppers, the guck and everything can get stuck and misalign the stopper. So first let's check the stopper. It seems to open and close okay. Um, it's equal height, almost level, so the stopper looks okay. It's a little grungy, needs to be cleaned, but other than that we don't have any obstruction or physical obstruction blocking the stopper. So now let's go underneath the sink. So usually what happens is, so here's underneath sure there's no conflict or nothing that's blocking it. And make sure that it's straight up and down and there is no, nothing that's blocking it or in the way. In this case, it looks okay. Again, there's nothing blocking it. There's no obstruction. So, and then usually, again, what happens is it build up, builds up inside the pipe around the stopper. So in this area here, not necessarily at the top, but in this area here, it builds up, and then sometimes it builds up um, down your P-trap. But usually, the buildup is inside here because there is a normal obstruction of the stopper. The stopper lever and the opening and closing right in this area here. So what we usually do is um, I'll unscrew the top of that stopper off. inside there to see for any obstruction. It does have some buildup as you can see here. I'm trying to put the light and the camera. That is a wire, a piece of coat hanger, but so far it's okay. So sometimes I will run a piece of coat hanger to clean it out. And we're just kind of cleaning out um, some of the obstruction. Right now it looks pretty good. A lot of times this will build up with hair and all kinds of yucky stuff. But right now this looks pretty clear. But like I was talking about, the inside of this pipe, so these will get gummed up with dirt or, or hair or whatever. So this looks pretty clean. Um, I don't see any obstruction with my light. So looking over it and then I'm going to bring the inspection light again so you can see on the video. And I see a little bit of buildup down there. But we're just going to run our vinegar and baking soda mix. So what you will need, or what I usually use, is a Pyrex, a two cup Pyrex. I bought this at the store. You can find these, of course, at the thrift store, but make sure when you find them at the thrift store, they're not chipped or cracked because we're gonna be subject then to heat. So I actually bought two of these so I could do back to back and wouldn't have to worry about waiting for this to cool down 10 minutes. But um, I buy a gallon of distilled vinegar and recently this was about four dollars a gallon and then of course I fill that up with two cups of vinegar and then I have a little measuring cup I put about a 
quarter cup of baking soda in there. I have my safety glasses. So for safety, in case it splashes, have a little my inspection lamp that we saw before, a piece of coat hanger in case we need to clear any obstruction, wire cutters to cut the coat hanger, and then of course baking soda. So you can usually use, um, these are to put in your refrigerator every 30 days. So this is a used one that I've already, after 30 days in the fridge, you can use that and just, you can use that all over the house, but in this case, um, it's very economical to use what you already have, or you can buy this two pound, and it was about two dollars for two pounds. So I just measured about a quarter cup in my little measuring container, and then of course two cups of vinegar. I would put the two cups of vinegar in the microwave, and I usually put it about four minutes and 20 seconds. I want this to boil. So now let's go put the baking soda in the sink. So with the top off, I'm going to pour baking soda directly in there as far as I can get it because I want to get down past that stopper lever, that area down below. I don't want to get in the top of the surface. So let's go ahead and pour that baking soda. It's about a quarter cup. You don't have to be exact. Quarter cup to half a cup. And then the extra, I just kind of push with my finger. And I'm going to put Actually, I'm going to use about and another quarter And then I will cup. add just a little bit of water to make a paste. The water just flushes just coats the inside and so some of that baking soda can get farther down in that P-trap. And then I will add just a little bit of water to make a paste. The water just flushes, just coats the inside and so some of that baking soda can get farther down in that P-trap. nice and boiling. Now we quickly, you want to make sure all your household pets and babies and everything are already clear your way. And then you want to put your cup on a hot plate. And then you can kind of see some of the residue that it boiled out of there. And then uh, I will usually wait a few minutes before running a fill this basin up with water and then run some water through it. And then put your cup on a hot plate and let it cool down in about 10 minutes. We can kind of see in there how it cleared up some of the um, debris and cleared it up. Let's put the top back on and fill it with water. I usually like to use hot water and we'll fill it up almost all the way to the drain overflow. Okay, we're gonna get getting close to the drain overflow. No need to fill it any higher. And here I'll wait till the uh, water settles, the bubble settles and make sure the stopper is actually stopping. And you can see a little water is going in the overflow, and that is okay. That's uh, clearing that out. But I wait, wait for some of the bubbles to kind of uh, settle down. And then make sure it does hold. Make sure we put the stopper down correctly and the le lever is pulled up. 
So it's pretty well settled, and then I'm going to go ahead and open it. And what we're looking for is a tornado, a tornado suction, um, whirling action suction. And that means it's nice and clear. And it's moving pretty quick. We should see that tornado maybe or not. There it is, a little bit. And that actually drained fairly quickly and that's actually normal for this sink so I like to run preventive maintenance like this at least once a month depending on how many household members uh, you know hand wash clothes in the sink and also depending on what kind of soap they use usually these liquid soaps dissolve faster than the solid soaps. The solid soaps, the little bits of soap, sometimes get stuck in there and then they harden up and then you have to kind of scrape them out or this technique works well, uh, works well on that. So if you have bits of old soap, um, just go ahead and throw it away. I know some people likes to save those, but uh, it actually causes more harm to your plumbing because those little chunks get caught in your drains. So usually the liquid soap uh, I prefer, um, definitely have the bar soap for dinner party or have guests come over. Go ahead and do that before the guests come over, like when you're cleaning your bathroom. Um, make sure all the clean drains are cleaned because it's embarrassing if your guests go to use your uh, bathroom or your sinks and they're slow draining or they're stopped up. It's just good to do that maybe a few days beforehand for your guests. Just do this uh, quick little preventive maintenance. It's cheap, it's quick, um, one gallon. So one gallon of vinegar for two cups in our, uh, goes a long ways, and then these are fairly economical. I prefer this over using any other Drano or any other preventive care maintenance products because it's cheap, it's safe, um, and you can use all these products around your house. I mean, there's unlimited usages for baking soda and vinegar. Vinegar will clean anything. And it's safe. It's safe for the environment. So I used, for this particular one, I used, actually used a half a cup. But for normal preventive maintenance, I use about a quarter cup of baking soda. And I put that as far as I can in the drain. If you cannot unloosen the top of your drain, that is okay. Just try to put as much as you can and then use a little bit of that water method and try to get as much water down in the drain with that baking soda mash mix as possible um, it's okay if you, you can't get it all and then I have my little pin light inspection and then of course a hot pad and safety and safety glasses before you start any of these projects because you don't want that uh, bubbling baking soda to splash on you and then I also wear long sleeve shirts as well for this because I don't want that bubbling baking bubbling uh, vinegar mix to uh, splash me in the eyes or splash me in the face or on my arms so it's just a quick little um, and there's a lot of different variations on this this is what I use and I use this and of course uh, I can use this on my kitchen sinks this you can't remove so I just kind of try to shove as much baking soda down those holes as possible and then of course your showers will go to the showers here so those grates usually lift up with a little screwdriver and uh, depending on your shower but usually the grates lift up so you can clean those out and then you just get a little screwdriver and pry that out and then shove your baking soda in there so it can get farther down in the drain to get um, all past the um, stopper lever so this drain here looks good and again I like to do this about once a month for all my kitchen bathrooms showers laundry sinks drains obviously can't do this um, on your toilet but uh, this is actually a quick easy inexpensive safe alternative to Drano and the more expensive chemicals on the market. Thank you for watching.